If there's ever a time where we needed to pull together as believers of Christ and, and unite and try to strengthen and make the world a better place, it's now. Mm-hmm. And that, that sounds like he's yeah. preaching our message. <laughs> there's one body, one church, one spirit, one hope. The realities of the faith, the realities that unify us are already there. Christ prayed for unity. What should we all be praying for? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the one prayer request of Jesus. Think about it in the Bible, that we actually have a say in whether or not it comes to fruition or not. I think in what God has done in you guys in, uh, in this podcast and the, the multitude of folks that you're reaching, the diversity, whatever God intended when, he's, when you started this, he's able to bring it to completion. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Whole Church Podcast, your favorite church unity podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Joshua Knoll, here with the other co-host, TJ Tiberius Mon Blackwell. Hey, hey, welcome. And today we are here with uh, another special guest, uh, Dave Ebert. Is it Ebert or Ebert? Uh, Ebert. I really should have asked uh, you that before we started, but here we are. <laughs> uh, that's Ebert. okay. Uh, Ebert, kind of like the uh, the film critic, uh, just without the money and notoriety. Mm, of nice, course. nice. All right. And we're going to be talking to Dave about um, improv humor and his podcast, Gifts for Glory. Uh, really excited to get into that. Um but before we do, we always like to start with a silly question. So, uh, Dave, we'll answer this post first. Give you time to think about it. Okay. Um, and this is just a real simple one or the other kind of question. Who would win in a fight, the tortoise or the hare? Uh, TJ? Mm. Yeah, so it, there are a lot of factors here. There are multiple species of hares and tortoises. Uh, but I think... For the most part, the tortoise is going to win because they have to fight each other. They can't just run away. And uh, a hare gets too close to a tortoise. Uh, they can bite surprisingly fast. And I don't think a hare can do any real damage to most tortoises. So, Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, even though the hare is really fast and like speed great in a fight, that shell's got to be better. <laughs> like just having a plate of armor has got to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm going tortoise too. All right, Dave. I'm going the same thing. Uh, you got the the speed of the tortoise, or excuse me, the speed of the hare, but there's not a lot of power there, and uh, the yeah. shell is going to give the tortoise the advantage. And uh, so I'm going to go with the tortoise for the, the very same reason. He's got uh, a layer of protection, and I would compare it to like somebody like uh, uh, you know the Ultimate Warrior. If he actually got in a real fight, he would get taken out. Cause he's so amped up and so, uh, you know, running everywhere with his, you know, speed that it'd just take one pump and in a real fight and he'd be down. Yeah. So tortoise all the way. Yeah. Ultimate warrior is a big guy, but someone who knows how to fight, that's, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might just, be uh, one of the very few times we've had a silly question with a unanimous answer. Yeah, well, I'm really hoping that when we pose it to everybody on our Facebook and Instagram, that someone says hair and gives a good explanation. Even if I disagree with them, just just for the sake of like, I just want to see someone's thought process behind that. Right. It'd be fun. But on to the real show. Uh, so, Dave, uh, yes. glad you're here. Thank you for your time. Uh, one thing oh, we believe. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, one thing we believe it is extremely useful for church unity is to hear one another's stories. Uh, would you mind giving us a snapshot of your testimony? Sure, absolutely. Uh, you, you touched on it um, a minute ago in the introduction that yeah, I do Im- improv. And most of my life, I use comedy as a way to kind of hide who I was because I was battling deep depression and was wrestling with the thought of, of suicide. And so it was a way to distract and, and deflect so people couldn't see that. I would, uh, you know, make constant jokes, uh, find ways to create moments of laughter because I felt not only could I hide kind of where I was at mentally and emotionally and spiritually, uh, I could also contribute to the world by making people's lives a little bit better because if they were laughing, then they weren't feeling the, the kind of the darkness and the pain that I was feeling. Uh, so that actually, uh, is, uh, why I got into comedy at first was to, um, to be a, a light, even though I wasn't following, uh, Jesus and I wasn't uh, really serving the Lord at that point. I, I was still trying to make a, a positive impact. And so 
you know, all those years that I battled uh, depression and thoughts of suicide, God was actually allowing me to develop a skill set and a uh, passion that uh, would uh, that He would later redeem and allow me to use as a way to serve others. But instead of serving others as a way to hide, it was now a way to reveal who He is. And uh, so, in 2013, when I finally uh, realized that I've been running from God for way too long. I started to pursue him and he led me from West Virginia uh, to the Chicagoland area to use uh, comedy and improv as a way to uh, really just point people to the foot of the cross. And that's what I've been doing for the last eight years. Mm. It's always nice to hear someone that got out of West Virginia. <laughs> that, that was yes. your takeaway, TJ? <laughs> that was my takeaway yeah. of the last few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I've I've got a lot of great friends, and you know West Virginia definitely has a lot of uh, positives and, and good things. Yeah, but winning place. It, uh, yeah, exactly. the The thing was, it's just it wasn't for me. So whenever I tell my testimony, I don't want anyone to really think that I left West Virginia with negative feelings or whatever. It was just where God wanted me to move was back uh, to where I was born, and that was in Chicagoland. Right. Nice. Nice. Yeah, um, it's amazing how many times we we discover that the funny people around us are actually the ones going through the most, and that's mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's a very similar sounding story, except for you got out of that and into Christ, which is um, yeah. hopefully the goal for everybody dealing with something similar to that. Um, we need more Christian funny people. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure that's a very little professional term, Christian funny people. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so. Um, you didn't mention the church in your, the church you're at now, but we are, we are curious about it. Could you tell us something unique about the church you attend or? The church I currently attend is called Thrive Church. It's uh, based in uh, Lockport, Illinois. And, uh, we're celebrating our fifth year as a church uh, coming up in September. The thing that makes it unique is in its entire five years, uh, they have not had their own building. Um, they're a church plant that is a portable church. And in all that time, they have not had their own property, uh, and they've actually pretty much had to move uh, locations based on the season. Uh, in fact, in the last year and a half since uh, the, the pandemic and the shutdowns and everything, uh, Th Thrive has met in uh, 12 different locations since the start of the pandemic. Man. Um, That's so that makes it unique. It, yeah. And it's a God thing too. It's literally the Israelites walking in the wilderness, following the the pillar of fire and the and the and the cloud, looking for the next location to set up camp. That's what Thrive has been doing. And every location that they've been to, they've picked up another family or picked up new membership. So not only are we mobile, we're growing and we're mobile. So it's uh, really unique, really exciting, and it's really cool to see how God works, even in the most uncertain of circumstances because when you're a church that's portable and you spend the first three to four years reliant on the schools to rent you their gym or or their auditorium and now you take all schools off the table because of the pandemic the fact that they're able to not only survive but thrive which is the name uh it's really very unique and it shows that the leadership of the church is really pursuing the leadership of the Holy Spirit in everything that we're doing. Yeah, that's awesome. So just a couple questions with that. One, one's real simple. Um, cause I, I think, I think my brain is just doing the wrong thing. Cause you know, sometimes it does that. Um, you say portable church, is it still like staying within the same city or is it like, yes. Okay. Interesting. Uh, for the most part, um, you know, lock in the Chicagoland area, all the suburbs tend to kind of run into each other. The, you know, the, the border lines are kind of blurred, but Lockport has been the primary home. Uh, we've met in uh, uh, nearby suburbs uh, that are, you know, five to 10 minutes away. But for the most part, 99% of the meetings have been in uh, Lockport. We're just, we're just portable because we have set up and tear down each Sunday, uh, setting up the stage, the sound system, uh, the pipe and drape. So it doesn't look like we're just meeting in the gym. And, and those kind of things. So that that's where portable meet, I mean, so we're not like a, a big tent revival, just going around the world, setting it up like uh, Steve Martin in, in that movie, Leap of Faith. I don't know if you've seen that. Right. <laughs> um, 
But now we're we're based in uh, in one of the suburbs. It's just that we have to pack up pretty much every week. Um, sometimes we're lucky; we'll have a few weeks where we can leave some things up. But for the most part, it's a complete setup and tear down, like we're you know like we're a concert on tour. Nice, nice. And is that a non denominational church, or what kind of church is that? Uh, we're part of the Fellowship of the Assemblies of God. Uh, the Assemblies of God uh, don't define ourselves as uh, a denomination, but it's just a fellowship of uh, like-minded uh, churches and, and congregations. Um, most would consider it a denomination, oh. but uh, so is yeah, it we're, of we're God, Is it separate from the Pentecostal Assemblies of God, or is it? Uh, 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 the AG is uh, is Pentecostal, so I think they're all yeah. within the same umbrella. Okay, cool. interesting. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's um. I when I was in Florida uh, for five years growing up, I went to Assemblies of God Church. So we we have some ties there. Um, me and TJ are Church of God of Prophecy, so similar, okay. but not. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, could you tell us about your podcast, uh, Gifts for Glory? I could, but then uh, I'd have to end the call. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, Gifts for Glory, it's a, a weekly show uh, that uh, brings on guests who are using their gifts, their talents, their passions, and even their, just using their experiences in a way to glorify God, whether they're doing actual ministry or they're just doing something that betters people's lives. They're using what God has either brought them through or God has gifted them with as a way to make a difference for God's kingdom, for his people, and for people that should uh, be on a pathway to knowing God. Mm. Uh, we've had uh, comedians, actors, actresses. I uh, even had a friend that uh, uh, she runs a, uh, a cosmetic, um, a permanent cosmetic uh, business in Little Rock, Arkansas. And her primary services to women who've survived uh, breast cancer and kind of helping them reclaim some of the things that the cancer took away uh, from their bodies that, that are typically what women identify as women with. I mm. uh, don't want to get too graphic, but uh, that should give you an idea of what she does. And it's not a it's not a ministry so much as it's a business that meets a, a very important need. And sometimes we'll open a door for her to be able to share some of the gospel or her testimony or the why she does uh, this business. So uh, we just want to highlight and celebrate the different ways people serve God to inspire other people to step into using their gifts uh, to serve God and to serve others. And also, you know, hopefully we'll reach some people who are not Christian, who will stumble onto a topic that we're discussing. And be inspired to get to know Jesus because there is a multitude of ways to serve Jesus. There's a multitude of ways to become a Christian. And there's no two stories that are exactly alike. So we want to tell those stories. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so how did you get started? What inspired you to start Gifts for Glory? So when I first be uh, moved back to Chicago, I started an improv ministry because in my naivete, I thought, Hey, nobody does Christian improv comedy. We're going to corner the market here. And uh, I quickly found out that, yeah, there are some people who are Christians who do improv. In, in fact, we found by by choosing a name that I thought was brilliant, we found that there was already a group that had that name. And they were kind of protective of their brand. So they were like, no, we're not going to let you be uh, use that name in Chicago because we don't want to get people confused. Um, so we realized, yeah, there are people that are doing Christian improv, but most of them don't do it specifically as a ministry to reach people, to inspire people, and to bring hope and joy. Uh, so we, we started doing that in 2013. And um, from there, I wanted to do more things with using the arts to reach people. And what, I always find myself having a lot of opinions. Many I have to keep to myself because I try not to seem like I'm high on myself. I'm genuinely pursuing God's glory. And then I felt like God said, you know, you've got stuff to say and you have stories you want to tell. Maybe you should do a podcast. And so I wrestled with God for a few days. Uh, fortunately, I submitted to that idea before being swallowed by a fish. Um, <laughs> and I, 
I uh, decided to use gifts for glory since that's what we were all about with the improv. Uh, the idea of using our gifts, talents, and passions for God's glory. So that's how the name came about, Gifts for Glory. And uh, in uh, mid-2018, I interviewed uh, a couple of friends and uh, just continued to let the, the show evolve, adding a few cool segments here and there. Uh, we do uh, one segment called The Interrogation, where I'll uh, ask seven random questions that really wouldn't fit anywhere else in the interview. Uh, usually they're softballs, but every <laughs> once in a while I'll try to ask something that might be a challenge. And then uh, we always wrap up the interview with a question asking uh, our guest, uh, for anybody that's listening or watching that wants to use their gifts, their talents or passions for God's glory, what is your wise counsel? Uh -huh. And uh, we just hear what people uh, share. Um, you get a lot of people that will just say, dive in, take the chance. Other people have some really deep and thoughtful ideas. And I love hearing that because it, it gives a, just a, a different uh, perspective on how being a Christian and serving God, it's not a spectator sport. It's not something where you just go and sit in a pew for an hour and a half on Sunday because Jesus used the words, follow, walk, pursue, serve. These are all action verbs. And we want to inspire people through that wise counsel to put their faith into action by doing something that God's gifted you to do. Awesome. Yeah. We have a, we have a similar question that we like to ask at the end. Uh, so it's nice to hear that we're not crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you brought up improv. Uh, do you think it's possible that humor can help the church maintain unity? I believe so, especially with improv, because by and large, the funny that it, that makes improv funny it's not about incredible wit. It's not about incredibly creative comedy. It's actually the, the mutual recognition that we are all humans. We're all in this together. And we're all kind of goofy on some level. You, <laughs> most people laugh at improv because they either recognize something about themselves or they'll recognize somebody that they know on stage. Like they'll recognize, oh, that, that's Vinny from work or, or that's Sally from church. They'll recognize characteristics that are kind of universal and then we can bond over the fact that we're all messy broken silly children of god and god just like any other father he's up there he's in his rocking chair just laughing at his kids being goofy and enjoying every moment of it and so um to anybody that's ever even thought about improv let me take the burden of the idea of having to be funny off your back you just got to be real. And the funny is going to happen because we are funny uh, creatures. <laughs> and with that said, by recognizing through comedy, through improv, that we are all very similar. We're all designed very similar with different personalities, gifts, and talents. But at the very root of it, we're all human beings. And by recognizing that the, the rich churchgoer and the poor churchgoer are the same kind of human being. They just have different paths in life. That can bring unity because you realize that they're not that different from me. They're not that, I'm not necessarily a complete outcast because I share a lot with this person that I never realized. Because when you get a room of people laughing together, you get these moments where you realize that we're more alike than we are different. Because you go into a room full of strangers and then you all laugh at the same thing. Everybody in that room is admitting a little something about themselves and all automatically there's this uh, at a very subconscious level, at least at the beginning, there's a new unity that's born out of those room full of strangers because they've all found something uniquely funny, but they've done that together. So I think improv and comedy can definitely play a, a great role because it unites us in the fact that we're God's created human beings. Mm. Hey guys, we just wanted to tell you a few of the ways that you can support us, the Whole Church Podcast, your favorite church unity podcast. Yeah, so you can subscribe to our show on wherever good podcasts are found. You can rate our show on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. You can sign up for our newsletter using either our website or by emailing us at thewholechurch at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. 
You can share this episode on your own social media accounts. You can donate to our Cash App using the tag down below in the show notes. Or you can sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the whole church podcast. Yeah, especially that last one. TJ, you always say that. Perhaps I was told to say that. <laughs> However, it's especially true for Patreon. Uh, you get access to a bunch of bonus stuff we do. You support us. We have a lot of goals to reach. It's kind of a great way to support the show. All right. Well, let's get back to it then. Yeah. And comedy, um, much like uh, C.S. Lewis says storytelling does, helps you kind of peek behind the veil to see the real truth that we're kind of scared mm-hmm. to see sometimes. So that's... um. It's really cool, which leads me to the thing I was most excited for. Uh, we wanted to see if you could work through some improv with us, do a couple exercises, if you know any. Sure. Uh, one of the, uh, the funnest things that we do is, um, uh, especially in the beginning where we're training people, because uh, we do improv not only for, for performance, but we do it as a, um, a tool for ministry, teaching people that. Uh, you do have a voice. You do have uh, something to offer the world. We we do a game that's called Rants, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. for the for the listener, uh, they're they're going to just kind of have to trust us. Uh, but uh, <laughs> since you guys can see me, on, uh, I believe you guys can still see me on your camera. Right? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so on Rants, uh, I'll be the conductor, and basically, I'm going to give you each a word, and based on that word, I want you to attach. Uh, a memory, uh, attach an experience, uh, attach maybe a person in your life to that word. And when you see me hold up uh, your number, so we'll uh, give Joshua uh, the number one, just because he's on top in, in my uh, screen. <laughs> and then TJ, you'll be number two. Uh, so when you see your number go up, then uh, you'll just talk about something related to that word. And when you see your number go down, uh, go, you, you'll pause and uh, the other person will continue. Now, the caveat to this is I may have both of you talking at once, uh, but you just keep going focused on your your story, whatever it may be. Does that so make sense? I don't, I yeah. don't play off TJ. We just both keep going simultaneously. Right. Uh, it's basically a, a, just an ongoing monologue, and uh, I'll uh, either start or stop you. And, and the idea is attach – Something emotional, what like a memory or a person that uh, you're inspired by the word. And uh, if you'll find an emotional connection to it, you'll find you have a lot more to say than you think uh, you would. Uh, and it's, it works okay virtually. Uh, it's even a lot more fun in, in person. So maybe someday if you guys are in the Chicagoland area, <laughs> we'll work on this and do it in person. Mm, perfect. So, uh, again, uh, Joshua, you'll be number one and TJ, number two. Uh, no preference involved, just uh, the order on my screen. So, uh, Joshua, your word that you'll uh, be ranting on is going to be desk. And uh, TJ, your word is going to be pet. Got so it. So think for a second, find find something. I'm ready. Uh, that you can. All right, cool. So, <laughs> uh, so we'll start with TJ. So, you know, I'm a young kid, right? I mean, still currently, I guess a lot of people would say that, but um, specifically I'm talking about when I was younger and I'd never had a pet before. Uh, my parents had a dog a little bit, you know, I was like five, <laughs> but that's not really my dog. I have no memories of that pet. Uh, we had a couple fish, it's whatever, but you know. Yeah. So desks, I have never really had great experiences with desks. Um, they're really just fancy tables that seem to want to harm me for some reason. Um, I, I remember in school, for some reason, I was given the small desk of my class. I think it's because I was late because I was doing something stupid in the hallway. And it was small enough that my knees were just pressed into the wooden part because it was one of those desks where like the chairs attached to the desk. So, you know, just my of, sister and I were like, OK, it's time there. for a dog. Um, we need a dog. What other memory I have? So with our parents... You know, just, um, they cave. They're like, OK, had, we'll get a dog. I was moving. It'll be fine. Uh, so we get the dog. I have no idea what breed it is. I don't think I ever knew what breed it was. Uh, but we get it. And then our mom wouldn't let it sleep and slide the first night we had it. So my father gave me his desk and I'm moving it upstairs to my new apartment. And 
for some reason, instead of waiting like a normal person for friends to help you move this desk, you clearly can't move up. A, like it was like one of those small, like turning stairs that someone would have yelled pivot about because, you know, everybody watches friends. Apparently, um, I decided I, I'm just going to lift this by myself. You want the dog the to sleep stairs. inside. She's a small, small dog. She likes small to cuddle. Me, She's probably like a year old. Um, uh, I actually we haven't named it yet. Stairs, that, even but my mom like, wouldn't let it sleep inside, so she puts time. it outside, and she's uh, like, "When I got, no, it'll be okay. We'll let her sleep in this flower pot." It collapsed almost so, in half. Naturally, on top of we're me. kids, uh, and um, we're just going to assign the first trait we can think of to name this dog, and we settle on bucket because flower pot just doesn't flow as well as a name for a dog. So my first dog's name was <laughs> Bucket, and uh, all right, <laughs> oh. Man, I, I feel like I learned some interesting things. Um, <laughs> I really kind of want to hear the, the rest uh, of the, the software story. we use to record will break up the audio into different tracks, but that would be kind of funny if you could just break the different tracks down and and, and oh, yeah, listen yeah. to the we full. Yeah, I have them separate so I can hear them separate and then <laughs> hear them together. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's uh, well, that was pretty amusing. Yeah. Um, what that's what a, is the end to the bucket story? That's a, DJ? That's a good. I feel end. like I need to know. That's pretty much the end. Uh, we named her Bucket. Uh, <laughs> she didn't last that long, unfortunately. Uh, a couple did, years later, did anyone in your family kick the bucket? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, at least not the I physical guess. dog. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we got another I, dog with a less fun name. So, yeah, my the the desk guy that broke on me uh, just. It, it tore up my arm real bad, but I actually ended up learning a little bit of woodworking to put it together. So that's cool. By a little bit, I mean nice. enough to know what wood glue is bolts can do. So that's cool. Hmm. Oh, fun yeah. stuff. That's, so, a, that's a good <laughs> exercise. I've declined to enter yeah. several improv groups, and I think I'll keep doing that. But that's a fun exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that and it's so cool enjoyable. because you tap into uh, a lot of information that you've you've hidden or suppressed or just completely forgotten about because you could talk about desks and say, you know, some desks are made of wood, some are for children, some are for adults. Eventually you run out of stuff to say. But when you tap into something that's a memory or an emotional thing, you find you have a lot to say. And I use that when I teach improv at uh, this organization for women who've survived sex trafficking. It's, these women have been told to be silent, to do what they're told, blah, 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 because you know they're basically owned. And now that they're free, I want to use this exercise to tap into their voice, their creativity, their good memories. And uh, this is a, a great exercise for that to prove that not only are you a human being that has experiences and ideas, but you have the ability to send those out and to share those with people. And okay. uh, so uh, that's definitely a fun exercise. And it's also it forces you to think about what you're saying because it's very easy as Joshua is talking for TJ to get distracted and try to respond or try to focus on that instead of what uh, what TJ is saying. So yeah. it has a lot of different uh, muscles that you're working to to play that yeah. Uh, exercise. Yeah, thankfully oh, yeah. that's a yeah. Thankfully, I have plenty of experience ignoring what Josh is saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I um yeah, that's real powerful use with with the women like like you what you were saying. Um, but yeah, no, definitely for for me. Being the person who is the most ADHD in the room almost all of the time, it's super challenging not to just start asking TJ about his dogs. Uh, then, uh, like, my brain goes, but what would the dogs, what would Bucket have done if Bucket was there when I was moving the desk? Would it have gotten in my way? Like, my brain's just, like, going all over <laughs> the place with that. And I'm like, no, no, focus, focus, tell the story. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that was a lot of fun. Um <laughs> so TJ, TJ already mentioned this. Um, we always end our episodes with a question um, that, that's hopefully real practical. Uh, we just like to ask our guest, if you had to give everybody listening just a single tangible action that like this podcast ends, they can go do whatever this is. What's something that they can do that would help maintain unity in the church? The first thing is make sure you're not in an echo chamber, which means Find people that you disagree with, but who are also willing to accept that you you don't see eye to eye with them. Have those uncomfortable conversations to understand different perspectives and see if maybe 
they can show you where you're wrong or you can show them where they're wrong. And then the body of Christ, the church can be better for it because we're growing instead of just listening to who we agree with. Because when we start listening to who we agree with and we don't hear the other side, those that we agree with start determining our theology. They start determining our faith. They start determining how we see the world because we don't hear of op- opposing views. And yeah. the church, as much as the rest of the United States, is just as divided because we only align ourselves with who we think we agree with. And we don't allow ourselves to truly be challenged in what we believe. We don't allow for the ironing sharpening iron. We allow for the cotton to polish our iron, not realizing that our iron is getting very dull. Mm. Yeah. I, um, I listen to a bunch of podcasts and most of them are Christian and, you know, uplifting Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But I think the one that actually challenges my actions the most, as far as like how I deal with other people is actually, I listen to an atheist podcast. I I won't tell Mm -hmm. everybody what, because I don't want them judging me and because it might not be good for everybody to listen to. Um, But for me, it's, it's challenging to hear what people hate about the church and make me think of, do I do that? How can I make the church better? How can I be a better representation to those who feel this way? So, yeah, that's uh, yeah. definitely a lot of truth in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also think it's important when you listen to an atheist podcast or somebody that talks about church hurt or church abandonment, take it with a grain of salt with some personal introspection, but also realize that many people who talk about church hurt, not all, but many are talking from a worldly perspective and not an actual Christ or Christian failing perspective. They'll right. blame a person for what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in them, and they'll call that church hurt or church abandonment. So uh, always make sure that your foundation is firm in, in the Word, uh, in your pursuit of Jesus, and take those opposing values as a way to do introspection to see if you've got a few uh, shortcomings. But also know that people will judge the church based on what the world says is love, what the world says is right, and not necessarily what God has said is love and is right. So uh, as you're seeking those opposing voices, don't allow your anchor to be uprooted from where God has you planted. Oh, yeah. And that's um, that's why I won't say the name of the podcast. But uh, yeah, yeah, because I don't I don't agree with any of their answers to the problems that they bring up. But I do agree that a lot of it is a problem and it, you know, it makes me mm-hmm. think, but you know, take uh, it with a grain of salt. That's just, yeah. So, uh, Dave, what do you think we would see change in the church if everyone started breaking these echo chambers or even outside of the church? If you're just listening to see what these silly <laughs> church folk I, are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we, we would all start to realize that it's okay to hear other perspectives and still remain the same. Because if your belief is truly rooted in truth, you could hear other perspectives without changing. And I think that there is a fear of change or a fear of uh, of argument or not being able to say the right thing to defend your faith. I think we eliminate all those fears because now we're shedding light on the problem and on the division. And Satan is a lot like a cockroach. As soon as you turn the light on, he's going to run for cover. Uh, <laughs> So if we could get through those man-made walls to realize that it's okay to disagree. It just like when my wife and I can't decide on what for dinner, our disagreement is not is not at all rooted in hatred or bigotry <laughs> or selfishness. It's preference, it's belief, it's idea. So we eliminate that lie that disagreement is the equivalent to hate. We also start to see that you know Maybe if I'm a Republican and I talk to a Democratic Christian, we start to realize that we have a lot more in common than Facebook and the media will have us believe. So suddenly these walls are coming down and we can be together. And just think about it this way. The Bible and Christ, they taught us about living in unity, not conformity. Mm -hmm. And a Democratic Christian can reach different people a different way than a Republican Christian could. And God can still use each side of the aisle as long as Jesus is number one. And we also stop trying to 
see each other as the enemy because the Bible is very clear. Our enemy is not the Republicans, the Democrats, uh, conservatives, liberals, or the libertarians. Our enemy is not even flesh and blood. So by being in that place where we can talk and disagree and still be in a relationship, all these lies start falling apart and there's even less possible there to divide us. Yeah. Of course, what he's saying does not apply if we're talking about Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. You yes, can't it does. disagree about Shut that. Um, if you don't like the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, yeah, yeah no, me and TJ have very different opinions about the prequel. <laughs> I'll drive to your house and I'll end you. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah. But in a good Christian way. Yeah, he'll end no. me in a good Christian <laughs> oh, oh i'll repent uh, <laughs> but uh the last thing we like to do on our show before the outro uh we like to give our god moment segment uh we just like to talk about a moment in our lives recently where you know we saw god whether it be a moment of worship or a blessing or a challenge uh anything anywhere anyhow uh, I always like to make Josh go first uh, to give everyone else more time. So, mm. Josh, do you have a God moment for us? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird one. Um, technically, I can't be telling you guys this, but this isn't going to be published until after I'm allowed to say something about it. So, I don't think it matters. Um, <laughs> my, I work for Shutterfly. They're giving a company wide raise kind of deal. So, super cool. Um. But they have not told us what it is going to be. And um, everybody's acting like it's a really big deal. Those over us who do know act like it's a huge deal. And I'm like, man, I'm. I, I'm like simultaneously feel blessed and challenged. Like I'm blessed because I know it's going to be good, but I'm also challenged because I'm like, man, my brain immediately goes to man. It's probably going to be like 10 cent. So I'm, I'm challenged to not be so negative. And also learn a little bit of patience because I don't want to wait until whenever to figure out what it's going to be. But right. yeah, that's awesome. It's going to be a jelly of the month club membership. I I would like that better than a 10 cent race. Shutterfly, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, so uh, Chipotle actually just did company wide raises. So uh, it's been pretty nice. I can't lie. But uh, nice. It's not my God moment, but uh, my God moment <laughs> of this week is uh, uh, a good friend of mine is coming into town uh, today, the day of recording this. And uh, until recently, it had been a couple of years until we got to hang out and uh, we got to hang out for about a week. And in those two years, uh, he had gotten an entire family. Uh, so going to oh. go get dinner with him tonight. And meet his wife and his three children for the first time. So that's nice. going to be pretty great. Thankful for that. So, Dave, uh, do you have yes. a God moment for us? Yeah. Uh, a week ago, uh, from the time that we're recording this, I was a, a counselor at Royal Family Kids Camp uh, as a camp for orphan kids. Uh, and, um, my wife and I, we've been married uh, six years and a month as we're recording, and we have wanted children. And I always thought that I could handle having boys, but I do not want girls. I absolutely don't want any of our kids to be girls. <laughs> but this last week, uh, during this camp with these, um, these foster kids, there's a, a girl there, and we just had a connection, and yeah, you know, just getting to know her and be one of the counselors that worked with her uh, off and on during the week. It, it like it was a God moment that changed my heart. To where I'm like, I could actually be a girl dad. I think I could do this. I don't think it's going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination and, and and things like that. But it was like a God moment saying, Dave, you can you can be a girl dad. I, I he, he had he got his faith in me to do that. Um, because he built me and he knows. But uh, for me, that was that was a God moment. And uh, I think me voicing that revelation is was a God moment for my wife because now she's like, OK, awesome. You're not going to be scared to death and in, in crying in the corner when the, the ultrasound comes back with the females. Right. <laughs> You're going to have female triplets, unfortunately. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, Why, do you realize that. how many people have uh, have prophesied that we would have multiples? 
Uh, so you're, I, you're you're probably not wrong. I call them as I see them. I just <laughs> and that sounds expensive. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, oh, but a blessing. Yeah, uh, it's always good to hear someone's heart changed uh, for the better, or you know, at least more inclusive. Better is subjective, mm-hmm. but <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time today, Dave. Uh, we have yeah. one more segment for you after the outro. So if you'll stick around, that would be great. Uh, sure. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, please consider sharing it with a friend or an enemy. Uh, share it with your cousins, even, uh, <laughs> who are neither. And uh, appreciate your time today. My cousins are my friends. Nope. Cousins. If you're listening, you're my friends. Um, They really are, though. Hey, Dave, uh, where can people find you and follow uh, Gifts for Glory? Uh, we're on uh, us all, you know, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find us at Gifts, the number four glory, Gifts for Glory. And uh, you can connect with me directly at Real Dave Ebert. Awesome. Uh, so, some future guests. Uh, we have return guests, Dr. Peter Beck and Pete Link. The Pete's are coming back. Uh, Dr. John Soden, <laughs> co author of In the Beginning, Ellipses, We Misunderstood. Uh, Best selling author, Frank Viola, will be joining us to talk about his new book. Hang on, let go. Uh, what to do when your dreams are shattered and life is falling apart. That is a title. And uh, of course, at the end of season one, we will have Francis Chan. Wow. wow. He doesn't know, though. Uh, I hope he doesn't. <laughs> he'll, he'll figure it out. Yeah. If he knows, then he's declined, which would uh, make us be in season one forever. So, Well, you know, I just keep asking him until he says, yeah, it, it, right. it's fine. Uh, what's, what's that story that Jesus tells about the, the lady going to the judge? She just annoyed him into saying, yeah, you know, right. it'll work. Uh, so thank you so much for listening today. We've so enjoyed you being here and uh, tune in next week. Do, 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 do. Bob. Do. <laughs> nice. <laughs>